I just received a weekly email from Mike Cohn, and the subject of the email is being too precise hurts your plans. Now, I thought that was interesting because I have a take on this, but I want to see where he takes it first before I explore what my opinion is. Uh, the email starts off, I need a backup drive. Um, I don't need a 40, ter- 40 terabyte drive, but the site I buy from listed one available. I thought I might as well click on it to see the price. The price seemed very reasonable for that much storage. But what caught my attention is that the drive ships in 205 days. Seriously? What are they thinking? How can they possibly know that this drive will ship in 205 days and not 204 or 206? This website fell into what I call the precision trap, uh, which is applying a false level of precision to something to estimate or plan. We often fall into the precision trap because of the math involved in planning. Let's stop there. Okay. I tell people all the time, that you should try to be insanely accurate with varying degrees of precision. And people laugh when I say that, but it's true. I just want to give you correct information. I don't want it to be so correct or so precise that you can hold me to a standard that I can't deliver on. So I might tell you what sprint I expect something to be done in, or what the current state of a project is, or where we are right now. And my answer is going to be very, very, very accurate. But it's not going to be incredibly precise down to the moment, down to the millisecond, down to the work item. We just can't do that. And I think that when we do that, we're backing ourselves into a corner because the more precise we try to be, the more that throws us into being inaccurate and ineffective. So let me clarify this with an example. The email goes on. Suppose a team has estimated that it needs to deliver 100 story points of work to achieve some objective. They've already calculated their velocity to be 15 units. Someone on a team does the simple math of 100 divided by 15 and gets 6.66. Team members then proclaim that it will be done in 6.66 sprints. Or hopefully someone decides to should round that up to just say seven sprints. But math like this leads to that precision trap. Uh, you can see how this is just like the website who decided to drive with ship in 205 days. The precision trap persists because we seem wired like uh, seem wired to like precision, right? It feels good to say we'll be done in 6.66 sprints instead of seven. We must really, uh, we must be really smart to know exactly how many sprints it is down to the hundredth. But I think you get where I'm going with this, right? The easiest way to be accurate. Oh, here it is. But we need to favor accuracy over precision. Accuracy is about being right. The easiest way to be right is to be less precise. There it is. Mike and I are on the same page again. Bravo. But we need to favor being accurate over being precise, right? For example, the website could have told me the drive would ship in about seven months. That would have been enough precision for me to decide whether to buy it or where else to buy it or buy something different. I'm not going to wait months for a hard drive, right? When a math tells me that we can deliver in 6.66 sprints, that is very precise, but it's probably not accurate at all. Just like the ship date on a hard drive, that estimate could be conveyed as a range. Instead of seeing 6.6 6 sprints, they might say 6 to 8 sprints or 7 to 10 sprints if you feel better. I think when you avoid falling a precision trap and trying to say everything's going to take equally the right amount of time or equally the right amount of exposure and that all these things are there, we need to make sure that we're just saying, hey, it's going to be delivered on or around this date or these are the features we anticipate will make it into the product or these are the things that we see that are going to help us build a better product. And I think that the more accurate you are and the less precise you are, the more happy your stakeholders are going to be, the more happy your customers are going to be because I can answer anyone with 85% accuracy and they think it's incredible, but it's so much easier than trying to worry about everything in a pool, right? You ask me, how do I solve this problem? And I can, I can help you solve the problem the best I can, but it's not going to be in a very precise way. I'm not going to use time-based estimation. I'm going to come in and say, uh, based on the scope of what you just asked me to do, that feels like it's this size and as soon as I can get it done, it's here. You know, it's just going to be very, very, very open and honest. And I think that's what's missing. That too many times when we we get afraid and we start uh, backing off of holding each other accountable, that's when we run into those situations where we have, you know, problematic estimation because everybody's trying to be way too precise. So what I'm saying is just take a step back and do your job and you'll find that you can be way more effective at estimating if you just take that step back and focus. That's going to do it for this week. Thanks, Mike, for another wonderful email. If you have a comment, question, concern, or anything else you want to talk about, learn more at AgileDad.com. I'd love to hear from you. As always, we encourage you to stay healthy, stay well, and stay agile, my friends. Until next time, do take care.